13. Sure. Amen. Are you there? Amen. Amen. Okay, it says, But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Yeshua, Jesus, we give you thanks and glory. See with us here today, standing with me here, Father, hold my hand, guide this lips. Let it be you that has seen and only you that has heard, because to you belongs all the glory. And everyone say, with hope. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Paul the Apostle wants us to understand or not be ignorant that death is not the end of the story for us. Amen? Amen. When Christ returns, all believers, dead and alive, will be reunited, never to be separated again. Paul says not to grieve for our dead like the rest of men who have no hope. Paul is not telling us not to grieve over the dead. But he is telling us not to grieve as others grieve who have no hope. There is two kinds of sorrow. There is sorrow with hope and there is sorrow with no hope. Hallelujah. The Christian is one who can sorrow with hope. We sorrow because we feel the pain of separation with our loved ones. We will miss them. We you know, wish we could see them again and be with them. And we have a hard time, so we grieve for them. But in the midst of that sorrow, we know that we will see our loved ones again. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That should bring us great comfort and great hope. We can sorrow, but we can also have hope. Amen. Yeah. The unbelievers, on the other hand, has no such hope. They have nothing to comfort their sorrow. When they walk away from the grave of their loved ones, they may hope they may see them again, but they don't have the assurance that we do. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. The believer has a different view of death than the unbeliever. The dead believers and the believers who are still alive can look forward to four awesome events that the apostle talks about in this chapter. Amen. Yeah. The first event is the return of the Lord from heaven. See how hopeful we can be. Amen. We have a great event and when the Lord Jesus returns. And 1 Thessalonians 4.16 says, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with the loud command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet call of the Lord. So the Lord himself will come down from heaven. God's people are so precious to him that this time he's not going to send ambassadors. He's not going to send disciples. He's not going to send apostles. But he himself will return to gather us up. Hallelujah. The angel said to the disciples one time, to Jesus when they saw him ascending to heaven in Acts 1, 9, he says, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will soon come in like manner as you saw him go. Hallelujah, the Lord is going to come back. That's right. And we should be ready for His sudden return. Amen? Amen. Not by standing around, He says, and looking up. Because some people think you, can, you don't have to do anything. We're just waiting on the Lord. And we're staring up at the sky, waiting for Him to come. He says, don't stare at the sky. Hallelujah. Amen. Meanwhile, while we're waiting on the Lord, we should be about the business of the Lord. Amen. The Lord is coming soon and we know it. So we got to be doing some gathering. Amen. Amen. Some uh, reaping because the harvest is ready. Hallelujah. So he says, don't stand here and look up at the sky. Get busy. You know he's coming. On the day you don't know, you need to be ready. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The second event 
is the resurrection of the dead. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 says, And the dead in Christ will rise first. So the grave will open up and the dead will rise first. We know what happens to the Christians when we die. We believe that at the moment a believer dies, his body is separated from his soul. The soul immediately goes into the presence of God, according to Paul. To, the, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That's what Paul says. Amen. When we die, our soul goes to be with the Lord. Our body, of course, gets placed in the hole in the ground, the grave, or maybe a, a jar or a box. You know what I'm saying? Our soul remains in perfect peace with the Lord until He returns. When He returns, He will bring with Him those who have fallen asleep in Christ. Those who have died and believed in, in Christ our Lord. Amen? The dead believers... That means that when Jesus comes, he will be accompanied by the souls of all those believers who died. Their bodies will be raised from the dead and will be reunited with their souls. And all this will happen in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Quick as lightning. Amen? Amen? So the third thing, the third event, is the rapture of the living. 1 Thessalonians 4, 17 says, We who are still alive and are left will be caught up together in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. The resurrection of the dead will be followed by the rapture of the living. The dead will rise first. Then the believers who are still alive at the time of the Lord's coming will not have to pass through the bitter experience of death. But will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air and will be instantly changed. They will receive their glorified resurrection body without going through the death. What a wonderful day that will be for the people who are still alive when the Lord returns. Amen. And the fourth event, is the reunion of the saints. The greatest of all reunions. Amen. The saints of all ages. Unite together with each other. At that moment. Believers unite. Christian sons. Christian daughters. They'll be seeing their Christian parents. They'll be seeing their friends again. Who believed in Christ. Amen. And that will be a glorious day. But the greatest thing will be when the believers meet the Lord Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Who once before had left heaven's glory to give himself a ransom for us. There in the air, those who are caught up will see their Lord and Savior in the flesh for the very first time. Right now we see the Lord through our eyes of faith. But one day we will be able to hug him physically in the flesh and see the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Even the happiest reunions here on earth cannot compare to this great reunion of the saints. Reunion here lasts only a few hours, maybe a few days, and then everybody has to depart again and go their own way back to their home, back to their life. They reunite but then they have to go home. The best part of the heavenly reunion is that we will never be separated again from that point on. Hallelujah. Paul said, and this we shall be always with the Lord. So see how great of a hope we have in the midst of our sorrows. We have the hope that the Lord is going to return. We have the hope that the resurrection of the dead will come. Amen. We have the hope that the rapture of the church, we have the hope that the reunion of the saints will come to be. Amen. So when, unlike other people, when their family members die or people leave this earth, you don't want to have hope that, or you're not assured that you'll ever see them again. But we can sorrow with hope. Amen. 
even though we're going through a hard time, we have a hope that never dies. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see the Lord Yeshua one day. Amen. I'm going to be with Him forever in glory. So no matter what happens on this earth, and how we could be afflicted, we could be in pain, we could be hurt, we see loved ones go away, but we have a hope. Amen. Mm -hmm. So right now, instead of staring up at the sky like we said, we got to get our loved ones saved. Bring them to the knowledge of the Lord. Give them the gospel so that one day that's the only hope I got to see them again is if they too believe like we do. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Look again at the four events in this passage and you will find that Paul bases all that he said about the future of the believers on the solid foundation, which is the death and resurrection of Yeshua. Yeah. Based on that, he's saying we got to hope. His resurrection guarantees our resurrection. Hallelujah. Amen. It was Jesus himself who said, because I live. You without hope, no matter what's going on in your life, whatever trouble is happening, if you look ahead a little bit, it's all going to be done with. Amen. When the Lord comes. This doesn't apply, though, to everybody. It's the bad news. Not everybody gets it automatically. It is only for those who believe that the Lord Jesus died and rose again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whosoever believes in Him shall not perish, but will have everlasting life. Whoever believes in Him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he hasn't believed. Amen. Those that don't believe just have sorrow with no hope. Right. Affliction after affliction with no hope. Nothing. You know that back in the day when they were trying to oppress the people, you know what the first thing they took away was their hope. If someone came along with a little bit of hope, they're like, kill that guy. <laughs> He's going to infest the whole thing. And once these people realize that there's hope, they'll hang on forever. That's right. All we need is a little bit of hope in the right place. And that hope will make you hold on because you see that little light at the end. Yeah. You see a little light at the end. You see a reward at the end. You see a prize. You see something glorious beyond what we can see. And that little hope will help you get through the sorrow times and the grieving times. Because why we have a hope? Amen. A person with no hope is dead already. Right. Amen. Amen. Hope keeps you alive because that's all we got. But we got our hope in the right place. Yeah. We got solid hope. Hallelujah. Say amen. amen. Yes, right. There will be a resurrection of the unbelievers also. But it will lead to judgment and eternal destruction. Bad times. There will be no happy reunions for the unbelievers. It will be total separation from God. The lake of fire. Moaning and wailing. Gnashing of teeth. Eternal death. Dying forever. See how they can sorrow with no hope. Or you can sorrow with full hope. And we know it ain't over when it's over. Amen. There's life beyond this life, and we're going to a glorious state of being. Amen. The Lord's going to come down, bring a new heaven, create a new earth. He says the meek will inherit the earth, or the humble Amen. will inherit the earth. So the earth ain't going to be destroyed. It's going to be renewed for a renewed people. Hallelujah! Amen. That's right. That's right. Those who want to participate in this glorious future awaiting, the people of God must make sure they belong to God. Amen. Hallelujah. The God who made all the glorious promises keeps His promises. Right. He makes them available only through Yeshua. Amen. A.K.A. Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You must be in Yeshua. Amen. To enjoy all the promises that he made. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we can sorrow. We can grieve. We can cry. 
We can moan, but we can do it with hope. Amen. Hallelujah. In life, we have hope in Yeshua. In death, we have hope in Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Our hope is, in death is that it will never overtake us. It will never defeat us. We've overcome death, hell, and the grave Amen. because of our Lord. So when bad times happen, when you're going through some stuff, or you don't see what's going on and you see anything good, you still have hope. Amen. It says rejoice in one verse because your name is written in heaven. See, my name is already written there, and I know it's not going to be erased or blotted out. So no matter what happens to this old body, no matter what happens in my lifetime, my name is written, and that hope can never be quenched or die. No matter what you do, chop my head off if you have to. But I'm going into glory. I'm hopeful in death. I'm not scared of death. If somebody comes to try to take my life, because I got a hope you can kill the body, but you can't kill my soul. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let's stand and give God some glory. Yes. <laughs>